Hello all, welcome to Keisha's Gossips and Truths. In this video, I will be talking about the latest news about the Royal family. I know it's been a while, I know. Well, Prince William is in the UK losing his mind. I mean, what is the issue with Meghan Markle? The hate he has with his girl makes you wonder if it goes deeper to Prince Harry and he fighting. I mean, if I didn't know any better, I think he was jealous of their relationship slash marriage. Just saying. already know this I may have mentioned it once or twice but just in case I did or didn't let me talk about it again first of all you all should know that Diana was barely 20 years old when she married Prince Charles she also didn't know him that well and the well-known info Prince Charles was in love with Harlot Camilla despite she being married and her well-known agenda to becoming royal that'll be another video actually it's already in a series of videos check it out on my troop show the royal family series Anyway, it was leaked by Penny Thorne, an astrologer who was consulted by Diana, who had finally spoke out about the bombshell claim in ITV's a new documentary, The Diana Interview Revenge of a Princess, that aired on November 9th in the UK. 25 years after her famous interview on BBC's, here's what Thornton said. One of the most shocking things that Diana told me was that the night before the wedding, Charles told her that he didn't love her. I think Charles didn't want to go into the wedding on, on a false premise. He wanted to square it with her and it was devastating for Diana. She didn't want to go through with the wedding at that point. She thought about not attending the wedding. Also leaked that, that both Prince Charles and Diana both were involved in their own affairs. Prince Charles with Camilla and, and Diana with some random guy in town. Oh yes. Always said this to her closest confidant. Well, there were three of us in the marriage, so it was a bit crowded. Oh, I'm not done yet. Diana also confirmed their relationship with the British former cavalry officer, James Hewitt. When Bashir asked her if she was unfaithful to Charles, she said this about Hewitt. Yes, I adore him. Yes, I was in love with him. Now, let's move on. I'll leave the link below. Check it out yourself. Now, <clears throat> okay, we all know how private Prince Harry and Meghan are, despite what the papers were alleging. So it will come as no surprise on the birth of Archie on the morning of May 6, 2019, whereas Meghan Markle and Prince Harry welcome healthy son at 5.26 a.m. while allowing Markle's mother, Doria Ragland, to return to the Windsor undetected. However, the palace didn't announce that Marco had gone into labor until Archie was born. And by then, Lacey alleged she Harry and Raglan were all heading home from the hospital. I mean, can you blame them? The UK tabloids were cruel, very cruel, and like the, it was like a media circus. I would have handled it the same way, but William was disappointed by the couple's prima donna maneuvers. You see, this confirms what took me a lot of investigating to figure out. To, I mean, this finally confirms who was behind most of the bad press about Meghan Markle and why Prince Harry left the UK. It wasn't because of Meghan telling him to leave. It was his spoiled, bratty, sexist, and chauvinistic brother, Prince William. And this comment proves it. Do you all know what this statement means? You see, Prima Donna reference, yes, it refers to a female opera singer, but it also refers to, and I quote, a vain or undisciplined person who finds it difficult to work under direction or as part of a team. Yes. This is what Prince Harry said about his nephew and his brother's wife. I mean, this is beyond cruel. How can you call someone vain? Who does more charity work and cares more about the world than you and your racist baby-making wife? Oh, I'm not done yet. Prince William goes on. Well, should I say Robert Lacey speaks on his behalf? Lacey serves as a historical consultant to the hit Netflix series The Crown. Recently released a new book titled The Battle of the Brothers, William and Harry, the inside story of a family in tumult. Which explains the relationship and alleged feud between Princess Anna and two sons. Oh yes, this author who works very close to Prince William, whom I'm sure gave his snooty comments. Mm -hmm. It seems that Lacey has been writing about the British Warren family for 40 years and previously worked at the Royal Archives, spoke to numerous palace insiders for his latest release. Oh yes, this is what he said about Meghan and Prince Harry's birth announcement. 
Sad to say, it was difficult for Megan and Harry to conceal the birth of their son because they were still on the payroll of the British monarchy. Lacey explains. We have a tradition here in Britain that royal babies should be seen and enjoyed by the public. But instead, Meghan and Harry chose to follow their own rules and have their baby in private. It is understood that William felt they should have gone through the motions and showing the baby to the public as members of the royal family had. Well, he and his wife anyway. Oh, I'm still not done yet. To seal the confirmation, here's more proof who is really driving and retracting some of the past allegations as well. Because now, based on evidence and actions of certain people, it entails a lot. For example, who were the first group of people to see Baby Archie's first? Queen Elizabeth, Prince Philip, Prince Charles, and the Duchess Camilla all showed up within hours and cooed over the baby. Meanwhile, it took Snooty Spore racist Prince William and a full eight days to see his nephew. Oh, I'm still not done yet. To add insult to injury, they didn't even bring their three children along with them to meet their newest addition to the royal family. No, they did not. You all know a lot of people have reported Prince William's temper as well. Oh, yes, he has taken comfort in the fact that, his, that he's their future destiny to be king. That's what has kept them going. Duty comes before all. So imagine the hell he would put Prince Harry through when he does become king. I mean, let's face it, he didn't want his brother to marry Meghan in the first place. Now, if you haven't saw my video I did about Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip's marriage and the Queen's rules and laws that are in her favor, but within those videos, you will find out the Queen and Philip went through their own hell when it came to their relationship in the beginning. Which further explains her actions when it came to compromising with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle on their departure. Prince Charles, the Queen, heck, even racist Camilla understood their reasonings. All of them except, yes, all of them except Prince William. He hated and suggested for Harry to be relinquished of his titles for leaving his family, or should we say him? Charles suggested, you know, just his military title as a compromise, even though he didn't want to do that either. But William gets upset. I mean, stand back. However, in the statement released, this is what was said by a close friend, Robert Lacey. Let's make clear that William's reservation wasn't whether Meghan was right for Harry, but whether she was right for the royal family and royal life, Lacey explained. When it came to Kate, William was slow and cautious. He followed duty. Harry immediately fell in love and discovered a new destiny for himself, a new meaning in his life. William saw Megan as a self-made woman who created her own celebrity and wealth in the process. The royal family, on the other hand, is in the business of representing values and living off the country's taxpayers' money and stealing stuff from Egypt. He continues, Royals are expected to know their place. And Harry, of course, was expected to marry a nice girl named Harriet or Gabrielle who lived in the provinces of Britain in the countryside and settled down. Boring. But Meghan and Harry both made it clear they wanted to do so much more than that. And let's just say there are things that you can and cannot do when it comes to running the royal family and what it stands for. This is what he's saying. So in January, Marco and Harry announced they were stepping back as a senior world and would split time between the United States and the United Kingdom, North America, while they become financially independent. And so far, they're doing great. The scandals have subsided, aside for a few ridiculous headlines here and there. They're still doing their charities, and Prince Harry just made it to the Times 100 Most Influential People. They also landed a $100 million contract to partner up with Netflix on various projects for them. So trust me, they're doing good. Meghan Markle revealed in the New York Times that was published on today that she had suffered a pregnancy loss back in July. She wrote that it happened at home while she was taking care of her and Harry's 18 months old son, Archie Harrison. Here is an open letter that she wrote for the New York Times. It was a July morning that began as an ordinary as any other day. Make breakfast, feed the dogs, take vitamins, find that missing sock, pick up the rogue crayon that rolled under the table, throw my hair in a ponytail before getting my son from his crib after changing his diaper. I felt a sharp pain. I dropped to the floor with him in my arms, humming a lullaby to keep us both calm. 
the cheerful tune is stark contrast to my sense that something was not right. I knew as I clutched my firstborn child that I was losing my second child. Hours later, I lay in a hospital bed holding my husband's hand. I felt the clamminess of his palm and kissed his knuckles wet from both our tears staring at the cold white walls my eyes glazed over i tried to imagine how we heal that was very poetic she has great writing abilities sound like something i would write i'm glad that megan and harry shared the news of this miscarriage with their families and that the duchess wanted to share her experience with the public to start the healing process for different types of loss from this whole year it was reported that Harry was supportive and that they made the decision together to open up about this. Oh, and it's been reported that they're doing fine and maybe a few more months, maybe next year, they would try again for another child. In further news, it was recently confirmed that the Sussexes have indeed opened up their home to Harry's first cousin, Princess Eugene, and husband Jack as they started their own family. As you all know, the Frogmore Cottage remains the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's residence in the UK. It is thought that they will stay there when they travel to the UK. So will Eugene and Jack. Well, that's it. On that note, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And hit that bell so you get notifications when I do post more videos. See you all later. Love you all. Bye.